12 shocking facts about Malta that will amaze you. Malta, a small island nation in the middle of the Mediterranean, may appear as just a dot on the map, but don't let its size fool you. Hidden within its modest appearance lies a treasure trove of bizarre facts, unbelievable stories, and ancient traditions that go beyond your imagination. From rituals like throwing bread into the streets to stop the rain, to forbidding women from stomping grapes during their menstrual cycle for fear it would turn the wine into vinegar, or believing that anyone born on December 24th is cursed and must count the holes in a strainer to avoid becoming a monster, but that's just a small glimpse of what makes Malta unlike anywhere else in the world. Are you ready to uncover Malta's secrets? Let's dive into everything about this unique island today's video. Number 12. The law prohibits menstruation. Like many places around the world, Malta holds strange beliefs and myths surrounding menstruation. These beliefs stem from past misunderstandings of physiology when menstruation was seen as mysterious and feared. Back then, women were often regarded as weak and unclean during their periods, so they were banned from participating in many important activities. Although science has since debunked these notions, folk customs and beliefs still persist. For some elderly people in Malta, following these rules is not just tradition but also a way to safeguard health and maintain good fortune. Here are three strange menstruation-related bans that some Maltese people still observe today. One of the most common bans is that women are not allowed to wash their hair during menstruation, especially with cold water. According to this belief, a woman's body is weak and vulnerable during her period. Washing her hair at this time is thought to block blood circulation, potentially causing strokes or other health issues. Many elderly people in Malta believe cold water can trap blood in the body, leading to serious health disorders. Though this sounds laughable with modern science, many older women still strictly follow this ban and pass it down to their children. Younger generations, though not fully believing in it, often comply to avoid judgment from their families. As a result, many Maltese women opt to avoid washing their hair during their periods, despite the discomfort of messy hair. Another strange belief is that women shouldn't touch their skin or anyone else's during their period. The idea is that negative energy or toxins from a woman's body during menstruation will make the skin rough or cause pigmentation issues. Therefore, skincare treatments like masks or massages are often forbidden during these days. This leaves many women feeling awkward, but they follow it to avoid judgment from older relatives. In some conservative families, taking care of one's beauty during menstruation is considered taboo. Young girls often joke among themselves, better wait a few days than face a disapproving look from grandma. Lastly, there's the rule against stomping grapes. This might be the strangest and most interesting ban related to menstruation in Malta. According to this belief, women on their period are not allowed to stomp grapes to make wine because they might spoil the fermentation process. Maltese people believe that the unclean or negative energy from menstruating women will affect the quality of the wine, turning the harvested grapes into vinegar instead of wine. Today, science has completely debunked the rules and beliefs surrounding menstruation mentioned above. While many young people have moved past these outdated notions, in some rural areas and conservative families, these old customs are still maintained. For them, adhering to these rules is not just a matter of belief, but also seen as a way to protect the family's health and fortune. Number 11. Avoid being born on December 24th. In Maltese folklore, December 24th, the night before Christmas, is not only a sacred time to prepare for the birth of Christ, but also holds a strange and frightening curse. According to legend, anyone born on December 24th is thought to steal the day of the Lord, putting them at risk of turning into a monstrous creature called the Gorgor. This is one of the most bizarre folk beliefs in Malta, blending spiritual elements with deep-seated fear and mystery. As the story goes, the Gorgor is a deformed, grotesque creature. Those born on December 24th are not as fortunate as other children because they inadvertently steal the holiness of Christmas Christ's birthday. As a result, their soul is cursed, and unless they perform a special ritual on Christmas Eve, they may transform into a gogo, a monstrous being doomed to wander in darkness forever. It is believed that the gogo brings bad luck and misfortune to those around it, and the person themselves will live in misery and isolation. This legend has made some people wary of giving birth on December 24th, and in some cases families even opt for early or delayed C-sections to avoid this risk. To prevent turning into a gogo, those born on December 24th must perform a strange ritual on Christmas Eve, 
Specifically, they must stay awake from 11 p.m. until Christmas morning, and during that time, they must count all the holes in a strainer, a common kitchen tool used to sift flour or rice. There are other variations of this ritual. It's said that the cursed person must count grains of rice instead of the holes in the strainer. Both methods require extreme patience, and the goal is to keep the person alert and focused throughout the night, thus breaking the curse and maintaining their human form until dawn. Although modern society no longer fully believes in these folk legends, the fear of being born on December 24th still quietly lingers in some Maltese families. Many prefer to avoid giving birth on this day to prevent any potential misfortune, and stories of the Gogol continue to be told during Christmas Eve gatherings, serving as a way to preserve traditional culture and folk spirit. Number 10. No sweeping at night. In Maltese culture, sweeping the floor at night is considered an age-old tradition aimed at avoiding bad luck and misfortune. The belief is that sweeping the floor at night will sweep away a family's good fortune and prosperity, leaving behind only bad luck. This belief has been passed down through generations and although it may seem outdated today, many families still observe this practice to ward off any potential bad omens. According to local folklore, nighttime is associated with darkness and unseen forces. Sweeping at night not only removes good luck with the dirt, but also opens the door to misfortune and risk entering the household. In some places it's also believed that sweeping at night is an offense to the spirits or ancestors, as nighttime is considered sacred a time for rest and reflection rather than household chores. Another interesting detail about this tradition is that if sweeping at night is absolutely necessary, the father or head of the family usually takes on the task. This stems from the idea that the father, as the protector of the household, possesses strong energy that can ward off misfortune. Thus, when he sweeps at night, bad luck is deterred, and the floor remains clean without affecting the family's fortune. Additionally, in many traditional families, having the father sweep the house symbolizes responsibility and love for the family. While this may not be common in modern society in more conservative families, you might still see fathers patiently sweeping the house late at night after everyone has gone to bed. Interestingly, the belief in avoiding sweeping at night is not unique to Malta, but also exists in other countries around the world. In India and parts of Southeast Asia, people believe that sweeping at night will drive away Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, making the family poor. Similarly, in China, sweeping during the Lunar New Year is thought to sweep away the year's fortune, so it's strictly avoided. These similar traditions and beliefs show that the concept of luck and fortune has deep roots in the folk cultures of many nations. Even though science cannot prove a link between sweeping and bad luck, these habits reflect a deep belief in the balance and harmony of life. Number 9. Drinking water filtered from the sea. If you've ever wondered where the people of Malta get their drinking water from, given that the island has no rivers, lakes or natural freshwater sources, the answer might surprise you they get it from the sea. That's right, thanks to reverse osmosis technology, salty seawater is transformed into clean, safe drinking water that meets the standards of the island's population. Malta is a dry and hot island with an annual rainfall of only about 600 millimeters. Long dry seasons and high temperatures mean that natural rainwater storage isn't enough to meet the needs of its residents. Groundwater sources are also very limited and easily contaminated by the sea. In the past, the Maltese had to rely on wells, rainwater tanks, or even imported water from a broad and unsustainable solution. That's why reverse osmosis became a golden key for Malta to overcome its challenge of securing clean water. Thanks to this technology, seawater is filtered to remove salt and impurities, providing around 60% of the island's water needs. The first reverse osmosis plant was built in the 1980s, and today three main plants operate continuously to ensure a steady water supply for the population. These plants are located in Galapsi, Circua, and Pembroke. Reverse osmosis is an advanced water filtration process where seawater is pushed through filters under extremely high pressure, removing salt, bacteria, and other impurities. The result is pure water that is safe for drinking and daily use. While the process requires a lot of energy, thanks to modern systems and technological optimization, Malta's plants have minimized environmental impacts and operating costs. Thanks to reverse osmosis technology, about 60 million liters of water are produced daily in Malta, meeting the needs of both residents and tourists. This solution not only provides sustainability for the present, but also ensures the future of the island in the face of climate change and global water shortages. Some visitors to Malta might notice that the drinking water tastes slightly different compared to other places. 
This isn't because the water isn't filtered thoroughly, but rather because the reverse osmosis process removes some of the natural minerals found in traditional freshwater sources. And, however, this doesn't affect the quality. Malta's drinking water still meets all international safety and health standards. Number 8. Giving a turkey to nuns to stop rain on the wedding day. If you're planning to get married in Malta and want to make sure the weather is perfect on your big day, here's a quirky tip that many Maltese couples have followed give a turkey to the nuns. Yes, you heard that right. In Malta, this tradition has been passed down for generations and although it may sound strange, locals still believe that this act can control the weather on their wedding day. Imagine this scenario you and your future spouse are anxiously watching the skies and checking the weather forecast every day leading up to your wedding. Instead of hoping for good luck with flowers or burning incense, in Malta, people believe that a turkey can guarantee a perfect, rain-free wedding day. But how are turkeys weather and nuns connected? According to tradition, if you gift a turkey to the nuns at a specific convent in the town of Slima, the skies will remain clear on your wedding day. The convent most frequently mentioned in this tradition is the Ursuline Sisters Convent in Slima, a popular coastal town in Malta. Although there's no clear explanation for why turkeys play such an important role, this tradition has been passed down through word of mouth for generations. Some believe that giving a turkey to the nuns is a lucky offering or a preemptive gesture of gratitude to seek blessings for the wedding. The nuns are seen as having a special ability to pray and intervene in matters from above specifically the weather. This tradition is believed to have originated during Malta's British colonial era, when outdoor weddings became popular among the upper classes. At that time, unpredictable weather could ruin everything, and since the Maltese have long held folk beliefs and strong religious faith, they combined these elements. Turkeys, commonly used in festivals and big celebrations, gradually became a symbol of good luck. While there's no scientific proof that a turkey can influence the weather, this tradition has become deeply rooted in Maltese culture and beliefs. Even many modern couples, while not fully believing in folk superstitions, still follow this tradition as a gesture of good luck similar to releasing doves or cutting a wedding cake. Number 7. Traditional Rabbit Stew If you are a food lover and enjoy exploring traditional dishes then stuff at Talfenic Malta's Rabbit Stew will surely delight you. This dish is not only considered the national dish of Malta but is also deeply rooted in the island's long history, dating back over 3,000 years when the Phoenicians first introduced rabbits to Malta. As traders and explorers from the Middle East brought rabbits to the island, the animals quickly became a vital source of food for the inhabitants due to their rapid reproduction and ease of farming. Over the centuries, rabbit meat has become an essential part of Malta's culinary heritage, However, during the rule of the Knights of St. John in the 16th century, hunting rabbits was often prohibited, as the meat was considered a luxury reserved for the nobility and clergy. Maltese farmers, faced with survival challenges, had to secretly hunt rabbits, and it was during these times that Stuffat Talfenek was developed. It is believed that the rich flavors of the wine and tomato sauce were perfected during this period to help mask the strong taste of wild rabbit meat, allowing it to be cooked undetected. As a result, stuff at Talfenic not only represents a delicious meal but also tells a story of resilience and the tenacity of the Maltese people. Today, this dish remains beloved and continues to play an important role in the country's culinary tradition. What makes this Maltese rabbit stew so special is the careful preparation and the perfect combination of local ingredients. The rabbit meat is thoroughly marinated with garlic, herbs and wine to infuse deep flavors. It is then slow cooked in a rich tomato based sauce, along with onions, carrots and sometimes potatoes. Wine, particularly local red wine, is a key ingredient in this dish, providing a deep, complex flavor to the sauce. The slow cooking process, which lasts for several hours, allows the rabbit meat to become incredibly tender and flavorful, practically melting in your mouth when eaten. The stew is often served with traditional Maltese bread ftira, a crispy and soft bread baked locally. Many families also include pasta or fresh salad to make the dish even more hearty. In restaurants, the rabbit stew is typically paired with a glass of red wine, making the meal a perfect match for wine lovers. Although stuff at Talfenic is no longer as common in everyday meals as it once was, it still holds a significant place during special occasions. Maltese families often prepare rabbit stew for large family gatherings, holidays and traditional festivals. Number 6. Throwing a piece of bread to stop heavy rain. Malta is famous for its hot, dry climate and sunny weather, so heavy rainstorms are quite rare. 
While rain is usually something to celebrate, especially in such a dry country, it's not always welcome, particularly when you're out and about and don't want to get soaked. To deal with this situation, the people of Malta have a quirky and fun tradition throwing a piece of bread onto the street to stop the rain. The bread used in this custom is called Hobbs Ta Sant Antin, which translates to the bread of St. Anthony. According to Maltese belief, throwing a piece of this bread into the street is like making a plea to the heavens, asking for the heavy rain to stop or ease. The idea behind this tradition is a mix of religious faith and a bit of folk magic bread as a sacred and essential food, helps open the way to heaven and brings about favorable weather. In the Maltese mindset, bread symbolizes life and devotion, as it is a staple in every traditional meal and is also used in religious ceremonies. Therefore, throwing bread into the street is not only a good luck gesture but also a way to communicate with divine forces, asking the saints for protection and to stop bad weather. Though it may seem strange and difficult to explain, this tradition has been passed down through generations and is still trusted by many Maltese people today. Sudden downpours aren't pleasant when you're caught outside or hosting outdoor events. In those situations, throwing a piece of bread into the street is a way to try one's luck, hoping that the rain will soon clear up. Number 5. Malta's Love Affair with Cars If you think finding parking in your city is difficult, try visiting Malta. With more than 30,000 registered cars for a population of 450,000, the island has one of the highest car densities in the world. Not only does each household have at least one car, but many have two or three. In many places, receiving car keys might be a big milestone, but in Malta, owning a car is almost like a rite of passage. Turning 18? Congratulations! Chances are your family will gift you a car not a toy car, but a real one so you can join the daily race. On the island's narrow, winding roads. There's a running joke that goes, if you don't have at least one car, you're not a true Maltese, it's just for fun, of course, but most Maltese families own multiple cars, as each adult family member needs their own means of transportation. Picture this every morning, multiple cars leaving a single house like a convoy, heading out from a giant parking lot. In Malta, cars are more than just a mode of transport, they are symbols of freedom and independence. You'll often see people taking great pride in their vehicles, much like others show off their stamp collections or rare antiques. Sometimes, owning a car is a social status symbol, as some families splurge on luxury cars to showcase their lifestyle. If you ever visit Malta, you'll notice locals polishing their cars with pride, treating each one as a member of the family. It's not uncommon to spot beautiful vintage cars cruising through the streets, driven by car enthusiasts eager to show off their collection. Number 4. A small but mighty nation. With a population of about 519,000 people crammed into just 316 square kilometers, Malta is one of the smallest yet most densely populated countries in Europe. The density is an impressive 1,300 people per square kilometer higher than bustling cities like Berlin or Madrid. If you've ever felt crushed on a crowded bus at rush hour, imagine living in a place where nearly every corner is filled with people. Here, not only do you run into familiar faces every day, but you might also discover distant relatives standing right beside you. This high population density creates many unique experiences. In Malta, where everyone seems to know each other or is connected through someone else, life unfolds in a very particular way. You might run into a childhood friend at a small street cafe or discover that the groom at the wedding you're attending is a distant cousin of an old friend. Maltese people often joke here, you don't need DNA tests to find distant relatives, just a conversation at a village festival will do. In fact, there are funny stories that say if you live in Malta long enough, you'll realize you're somehow connected to nearly everyone. This close-knit community creates a strong sense of unity, where people look out for and help one another, almost like an extended family. Because of this familiarity and closeness, Malta boasts one of the lowest crime rates in Europe. Most residents feel safe walking around at any time of day. Serious crimes are rare, and it's not unusual to have a stranger call out your name just because they remember to meet you once at a local festival. Number 3. The Wallet-Friendly Bus System If you don't want to participate in the fierce race of cars on Malta's narrow streets, buses are definitely an ideal and budget-friendly option. Malta's public bus system is famous for its affordability and enjoyable experience. With tickets costing just 1.5 euros in the winter and 2 euros in the summer for a two-hour ride, you can hop on any bus to explore the island's top destinations. Compared to the cost of fuel and the challenge of finding parking, which is no small feat, this is clearly a great deal. 
If you plan to explore Malta for several days, consider purchasing the Explore 7 Day Pass for just 21 euros. This unlimited travel pass allows you to ride any bus on the island for a week. You won't have to worry about finding change for each trip or keeping track of the two-hour ticket limit. This is especially handy if you want to visit popular beaches like Golden Bay, explore the capital Valletta, or hop on a bus just to enjoy a scenic ride around the island with no particular destination. With the Explore Pass, you have the freedom to travel from coast to coast, from beautiful seaside towns to quaint inland villages. For history and architecture lovers, hopping from bus to bus to discover ancient sites is an experience not to be missed. If you plan to stay in Malta longer or want to live like a local, consider getting the Tallinger card. This bus pass is designed for residents and long-term tourists, offering free, unlimited travel across Malta. Yes, you heard that right with a Tallinger card in hand. It's as if you have your own private bus without worrying about the cost. Despite its many advantages, Malta's bus system does have a few drawbacks that you should be aware of. Buses are not always punctual. But hey, this is the Mediterranean. Everything here runs at a more relaxed pace. Don't worry if the bus is a few minutes late or if the driver stops to chat with a familiar face. Just consider it part of the Maltese experience, one that teaches you to slow down and enjoy the moment. Number 2. The most bombed place in World War II. During the dark days of World War II, Malta became one of the most heavily bombed places in the world. With its strategic location along vital Mediterranean shipping routes, the island quickly became a target for both Germany and Italy in their efforts to control the region. Between 1940 and 1942, Malta endured more than 3,300 air raids from Axis forces, with bombs raining down on cities and villages across the island. Nearly every day for two long years, German and Italian planes filled the skies, dropping bombs on this small island. From June 1940 to December 1942, Malta barely had a day of peace. Key ports like Valletta and Grand Harbour were top targets, while residential areas, hospitals and churches were not spared from destruction. Over 30,000 buildings were destroyed or severely damaged, including historic landmarks, schools and churches, structures that symbolized the culture and faith of the Maltese people. One of the most famous churches, Our Lady of Victory Church, was reduced to rubble in a devastating air raid. The Capuchin Hospital in Floriana also became a pile of debris overnight. Each bomb drop crushed hope, yet the Maltese people rose up time and time again to face the disaster together. Despite facing relentless attacks, the people of Malta never surrendered. They banded together, taking refuge in underground tunnels and air raid shelters dug beneath Valletta and other cities. These tunnels originally used for military purposes during the era of the Knights of Saint. John became a safe haven for thousands of innocent civilians. After the Axis forces were defeated and the Mediterranean campaign came to an end, Malta faced the enormous task of rebuilding. Thousands of homes, hospitals, schools and churches had to be reconstructed from the ruins. With support from the United Kingdom and its allies, the Maltese people quickly restored their lives and rebuilt their infrastructure. After years of effort on September 21, 1964, Malta officially became an independent nation, breaking free from British rule and entering a new era of self-governance. Number 1. Blocking evil with horns. If you ever take a stroll through the villages and old towns of Malta, you'll easily notice that many homes and barns have a pair of horns mounted above the doors. These aren't just decorative features but part of an ancient folk tradition. According to Maltese belief, these horns possess magical powers that ward off demons and evil, protecting families and livestock from bad luck and misfortune. In many cultures around the world, animal horns have long been seen as symbols of strength, protection and good fortune. In Malta, the custom of placing horns above doorways stems from the belief that horns carry strong energy, capable of repelling negative spirits and harmful forces. Old homes and barns are often adorned with goat or bull horns to protect both the residents and their animals from evil spirits or bad luck. This custom is not only practiced at private homes but also in barns and stables, where livestock plays a crucial role in the local economy. The Maltese believe that demons and negative energies are most active at night and pass through doorways, so placing a pair of horns above the door helps stop these evil forces from entering. In particular, stables are carefully protected, as healthy livestock is vital to the livelihood of many farming families. Thank you for joining us on this journey to explore 12 surprising facts about Malta. 
This small island nation is packed with fascinating, quirky, and unbelievable stories. If you find this video interesting, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss more exciting content. See you in the next adventures.